update. Remember last episode when I was making rear axle flange gaskets? I'm sitting there drilling through the gasket material, big old drill bit, getting a poor result. Well, YouTuber Tommy chimed in and said, all you need is hollow punch set. I own a hollow punch set. Didn't think of it. A lot of good that did me sitting in the top drawer of my toolbox. I appreciate input like that. You guys know another way of doing something? I want to hear about it. Brake line shield. Rubber grommets. Cleaned up the rubber grommets with uh, Armor All. Made them fairly nice and shiny. They go right here. Okay, the grommets that come off of uh, brake line shield. The one with the flat spot, that one goes closest to the differential, not out by the brakes. Flat side goes here and facing down. Here we go. Gonna put the brake line back on the differential. Kind of wraps around like that. Threads into the wheel cylinder. Got the junction here that goes between the two lines. This guy goes up here. brake hose facing to the right does the bolt hole line up with the differential. Line shield. Let's do it. Two short bolts go in the middle. Long bolts go with a spacer through the grommets. Brake line shield torque specs are not in the Haynes manual. If you happen to know what they are, leave them in the comments down below. Until then, just taking them down hard with a regular ratchet. I was gonna put the shoes on today. You know, there's always something missing. Even though I bag everything and label it, and, you know, shit still gets separated as we do processing, like cleaning different parts, getting them plated or powder coated. If it's rubber, it's gotta get, you know, soaked in armor all or replaced. So what's missing? Little rubber jobs that go on these. Brake shoe adjustment spring, boot. The hell. Okay, today was going to be all about putting the brake shoes on the rear end. And uh, after reviewing my How Shit Came Apart videos, I've determined that um, these emergency brake actuator brackets, uh, they sit behind the shoe and they have the emergency brake cable going through the little lever. Won't be possible to put that back on if the shoe is in the way. So, today just went from 
brake shoe day to put the rear end back in the car day, so that's what I'm going to do today. Putting the rear suspension back on the car did not go well. I'm going to show you all the difficulty I had. Maybe you guys can avoid some of the roadblocks I hit. Take a look. So putting the rear end back together, I got uh, everything kind of partially laid out, ready to go. The front eye has to be the last thing to go on just because of the nature of the way the stud goes through at the end. You want the rear shackle assembled before you lift up and put the eye bolt nuts on. Got my uh, silicone lube here, Sil glide essentially but a boatload came with the Super Pro bushing, so I'm using that up. Nuts go on the side towards the fender, so that's how we're going through here. That's how it came off the car, anyway. I intended to put it back the way it came off the car. After looking at an illustration in the factory repair manual, it looked like the nuts go towards the spare tire. So, I think it doesn't matter, and when all was said and done, I ended up putting the nuts towards the spare tire. Now the rear shackle goes in a manner, once you look under your car, you'll see where this one bolt hole goes and where the two bolt hole goes. So it's going in in this direction. You need to have this part assembled before you lift up to the vehicle because you won't be able to get, there's no clearance to get that bracket put in once, once it's lifted. So these shackle eye nuts get torqued to 14 foot pounds. You want to torque the rear shackle nuts before you lift up to the rear end because you won't be able to reach the nuts with your torque wrench once it's in the car. And come on, there we go. Now let's make sure this still swivels. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This stuff's gotta be flexible. Okay, nuts go towards the fender. Okay, here's the situation. We tried to put the rear end back in and then put the leaf springs back on. Yeah. Turns out there's so much involved, there's so many different parts putting these leaf springs back on. You got the little, uh, first there's the U-bolts and then there's the bracket and then you've got the flange underneath and then you got the two rubber pieces and it's just so much stuff and everything's so heavy. You know, the leaf's fairly heavy. It's like a puzzle that you have to hold together while you put it in coming back out. It's too hard to do under the car. So we pulled it out, put it up on sawhorse, tightening these in a little by little fashion. Want them to go up nice and smooth and even. I don't want any binding. The other side ended up having a rough time with one of the U-bolts, so um, we put this one U-bolt on and it was difficult to get the nut started. You know what, I cleaned these up and these threads were fine. I tried nuts on them just to make sure everything was great. What ended up happening is a brand new nut that I had turned out to be, you know, rat fucked. It totally ruined one of my U-bolts. I tried to die thinking it was the U-bolt, but it, it was the nut. So even though these threads were fine, they're now history. Then we went to the green car and uh, got us a new U-bolt. So 
I'm gonna end up the blast powder coat this puppy. And uh, I gotta do that before I can put the rear end back in. So for now, I'm just gonna take it off the sawhorses, hide it under the car, and get busy on that U-bolt. So, got the new U-bolt. Um, not new, but I got it off the green car. Powder coated it gold. Just gonna use a nickel, plated nut, and washer. So, what happened on the old one, I tried a nut on the threads just to make sure before we got started. What happened is one of my brand new nuts that was supposed to be a 1.25 thread was actually a 10 by 1.5 thread. And that's why this happened. So, yeah. Now I have two known 1.25 nuts. Garen frickin' teed. Back to the differential on the sawhorse. We realized we needed to use gravity in our favor. Turning the differential upside down allowed the heavy leaf spring to sit atop its perch while we assembled the 17 pieces that make up the leaf to differential attachment. With all the weight and most separate pieces on top, the only parts to keep from falling were the U-bolts and the U-bolt seat. A lot easier hanging it upside down. So everything will flex here. So I don't actually want to tighten all these nuts until my rear shackle and front eyelet are bolted to the car. Right now I'm just snugging. Still want things to flex so things will line up. Darn near. Very close. I'm going to almost wind up. Rear shackles are close. Now your side just lined right up. Started? Yeah. Let's see what I can do on my side. I'm going to pull these shackles back until the front holes line up. So in order to line up the front eye with the bolt holes and the little, uh, you know, this guy, you come back here to the rear shackle and you pull it down. So by swiveling your rear shackle, you can put the front eyelet in place. Lines right up. Almost like I'd done it before. But, as you all know, I've not done this before. I have no shame in learning how to do shit. As a matter of fact, I'm enjoying it. Get lined up with that hole. And then in you go. Are you a pothead fucker? So now I'm gonna climb out from underneath the car and find the torque specs for all these nuts and bolts and snug it all up. According to the manual, you should not tighten these bolts until the vehicle has been on the ground and you've bounced it around a little bit, you know, jouncing it. But they do provide a range of torque. It's 11 to 17 foot-pounds. It's going to be a long time before I put this thing on the ground. So I'm going to set these at 11 right now. And after I've put the vehicle on the ground and jounced it around like the manual says, then I'll increase the torque to 17. So the 11 to 17 foot-pounds applies to the front eye nuts and bolts and the rear shackle nuts and bolts. The factory manual does not mention the shackle to frame bolt torque specification. So what I'm gonna do is 
probably like 35. These are 14 millimeter bolts. Here's 35. 35. I wanted the U-bolts to be flexible during installation. I needed things to be able to get into position. So these were relatively loose. I mean, they're not. They were snug. Just enough to be able to manipulate the leaf spring. And torque specification for U-bolt nuts is 27 to 33 foot-pounds. And just like the manual said for the other bolts, I'm going to go to the 27 foot-pounds. And then after it's been jounced around, then I'll tighten them up to the 33. Okay, there's our 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. And that's where I'm going to end this episode, which brings us to the question of the day. Dynamat. I'm thinking about using it for sound deadening. I've had a loud, resonating rotary for 15 years, ready to defeat some of that roar. Would you use it? Tell me why. If not, why not? Tell me what you think about that in the comment section down below. While you're at it, click that thumbs up button. If you're new here, hit subscribe, watch my previous episodes, and be on the lookout for new episodes. Coming up next, rear brakes, rear shocks. Now I know I've been saying for a year now, front suspension videos are coming soon. It's eventually gonna happen. I won't even mention doors, weather strip, fuel tank videos. Oh, I just did. Oh look, it's time for me to shut the fuck up. Peace out, brother.